Hello, History of Sexuality students. This is Professor Bowen here with some comments on our second quiz of the semester. Overall, we did quite well with this quiz. I was pretty impressed with your responses to both of the questions, uh, but there were a few things that I wanted to clarify on the first question. Uh, that is the one where I gave you the primary source excerpt from the Egyptian scholar and mystic Al-Shirani's writings and asked you to analyze them. The first thing I want to say about this question is that if I give you a passage to analyze, I expect you to actually analyze it. Uh, some of our responses consisted of nothing more than information taken from lectures or from our other readings. It's okay if you use this kind of information to round out your analysis, but that information is not a substitute for the analysis. You actually do have to break down the passage bit by bit and explore its significance in a way that responds to the question that I have posed. Also, in our analyses, some of us saw Al-Shirani's writings as an example of the way that some early Muslim scholars were opposed to homosexuality, but this is not actually the case because there was no homosexuality for him to be opposed to. This is not a category that was part of his conceptual world. Um, part of the reason I showed you this excerpt was to illustrate the fact that in early Ottoman society, there was neither a word nor a category for individuals who preferred one gender over another. There is no idea of homosexuality because you can see from the excerpt that he places people who have anal sex with women and people who have anal sex with men in the same category. Secondly, some of us took this excerpt as evidence of the fact that scholars in the early Ottoman Empire were totally against liwat, uh, that is, anal sex, either between a man and a woman or between men. And this is also somewhat of a problematic interpretation, because if you look at the first few words of the excerpt, right, what Al-Shirani says is that he opposes those scholars, and he puts those scholars in quotes, who think that liwat is fine and perfectly permissible. So what this suggests to us is that there's actually no consensus. We don't know whether Al-Shirani's view is the majority one or the minority one, but it's clear that some people have no problems with this. That's why he's writing this passage. So, in other words, despite what Al-Shalani says, we can actually take his statement as evidence of the fact that liwat and homoeroticism uh, were tolerated and accepted by some early Ottoman legal scholars. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies some things for you with regard to the second quiz. If not, please do get in touch however is most convenient for you. And that's all I have to say. So uh, thanks for watching, and I look forward to contributing to our week five discussions on courtly love very soon. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.